Well, I'm delighted to be joined by the club's new physiotherapist. We'll, we'll come to that in a moment. Christian Jolly, it's fantastic to see you here again. It's good to be back. It's great to be back. I've got to correct you, assistant physio. Yeah, I said we'll come to it in a minute. Okay, we'll get we into the so detail. I'll get that one in early. But no, it's great to be back. It's buzzing, week four. And it's, um, yeah, got my teeth stuck in and, and the players seem to be uh, responding to me pretty well. So yeah, I'm, really I'm sure they are. And you've got... You've got official branding. You've got your initials on your shirt. Yeah, no, definitely. And I've gone grey. You've gone grey. So you're, you're red, are aren't they? So officially yeah, I've transitioned management. quite swiftly. Yeah. Uh, the um, club website has profile on you in your current role, but it focuses pretty much entirely on your time as a player. So I wanted to leave that to one side because we've talked about that before, um, although fascinating and successful though it was, and talk about what you've done since retiring from playing. So I've, I've gone back to education. I started actually when I was still playing with the club. Yeah, um, I remember. And I'm now going into my final year in physiotherapy. So that's why uh, I can't have the, the lead physio title, but I should be able to obtain that next year when right. I finish my degree. So, yeah, so that's what I've been doing. I've been going up to Manchester sort of twice a week. Pandemic has made things a bit difficult, so it's gone virtual, but I've um, continued my education and, and picked up different courses to, to prepare me for an opportunity like this and uh, I'm um, taking it with both hands. So are you actually getting your degree from Manchester University? From Salford University, oh, okay. that's right. right, yeah. So that's where it's coming from. I've been supported by the PFA, which have been fantastic and, and I'm really grateful to them. And then this gives me sort of real hands-on work experience to, um, to really take my, my next step in my career. And uh, I've said, talked about you on the website now, mainly as a player, but it, it also mentions that on the website for 19 to 20 season, you were listed as a fitness coach. Did, did, did that happen in a sort of regular basis? Yeah, so I was covering the home games. So that was sort of my right. transition away from playing. So I used to support the boys at a match day at home. Um, obviously, I couldn't travel everywhere I needed to because it was um, taking a step away from football, my education, and obviously having to find an income that replace the football earnings that I was accustomed to so so yeah so Gaffer managed to get me a role on match days at, the, at home and and it worked really well and it really helped my transition away from playing because it's quite difficult mentally to, to sort of leave that chapter behind but it was great I found the hardest year was obviously the lockdown along with everyone else in in the world but um, that was really tough that I didn't have a footing in the in the game and and it really highlighted how much I missed it and you you had your own little business going on didn't you yeah, so that's still going Is at it? the moment. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm still juggling and, and trying to get other therapists to assist me. But yeah, that's a residential thing um, where we go to people's homes yeah. to treat them and, and make sure that they're they're well and healthy. It's how fold up table will travel. Exactly that. And what's it called? It's make movements. Make movements. So, yeah, that's, that's a right. big shout out, homes. I like it. Yes. Yeah. yeah always. Always. <laughs> um, so that would, you had that going on through lockdown or could you not do it in lockdown? So I wasn't allowed to treat in lockdown one. Lockdown two, I was able to treat and then lockdown three-ish, it went off again. So it was a bit of a stop start year. It was very, very difficult sort of financially and being a new business, but we've all suffered, haven't we, collectively? So thankfully we're coming out of it and I'm double vaccined up and, and I'm fit and healthy and, and ready to treat, so. Brilliant. And how did this, role come about? Did Douse approach you or did you approach him? I think Gaffer knew exactly what the plan was in regard to my future transition away from playing and he knew that I was um, getting my degree in physiotherapy um, and yeah we've always stayed in contact through the good through the bad and whether I'm playing or not playing and this opportunity that the club were going full time and he might need some support in the backroom staff in order to keep the players fit and healthy and, and ready for selection. So yeah so it's sort of the stars aligned and um, it complements, obviously, we've got Phil, that's the lead physio, and he's fantastic at what he does. We've got Gary Lewin, who's a consulting physio, so anything that sort of trips us up or anything where we need those expertise, we can lean on him. And, um, yeah, so it feels like we're at a solid unit, medical side, and we can make sure that the gaffer's got a full squad of selection to be made so uh, his, his choices are difficult come the start of the season. And... Uh do you, are you going to have to do some NHS time as part of your qualification? Or In order to become chartered, to be yeah, you, have to, you have to complete a thousand hours of placement over the four years. Right. So that 
covers different departments. So you can go via the NHS to cover your sort of respiratory physio, your neurophysio, and your, your musculoskeletal, which is what football is considered. So I tick the, uh, the MSK stuff. Um, and then I've got to tick other boxes, which I'll have to arrange myself. So that'll be some off-season stuff when uh, when we're done next year. Yeah. Okay. And uh, what exactly are your responsibilities now? As you say, Phil Routledge is the, the lead physio. He's always there at matches. That's right. Um, and so I guess what it amounts to is that he's legally responsible for the physio provided to the 100%, players. 100%. So he's but you, even though you're providing some of it? Exactly that. So he, he leads, he dictates how we treat and how we intervene with players' welfare. Um, so I get to learn from all of his experiences through the NHS and obviously he's been established for a long time. Uh, my day-to-day running is to make sure that operationally we have sort of medical emergency action plans put in place so this is a new training ground for us full time so we need to make sure that if an incident happens I'm aware and the staff are aware of exactly how we handle that incident you know that we're a couple of pitches away from the main training complex so that means we need to transition from here to here if we need to call emergency services what happens so I'm in charge of all of that the safety and the care of the player make sure the boys are ready to train and prepped and if there are any niggles and so on we address them straight away and I make sure that the admin is is reported on that so it's really a massive step up from going part-time to full-time because we're legally obliged to make sure that all our player care is documented and we make sure that we've got the right resources in place and that's my main job so operationally I take care of the Monday to Friday and then on a game day Phil will then take the lead and then I get to learn on how to be responsive on a match day. So it complements each other quite well. Finally then, what, what sort of ambitions have you got in, in, in football, in general as a physio? Um, I think at the moment it's about influencing the squad the best I can. I've obviously always been accustomed to playing and you can influence things on the pitch. I've no longer got that ability. So now it's about making sure that players are tuned to their optimal in order so they can go and deliver on the pitch. So, I mean, I've spent a time with a handful of lads that have had niggles through the first couple of weeks of pre-season and I get a real buzz from getting them back on the training pitch, allowing Gaffer to select them if he chooses. And if they perform, then I get a little win within myself. So that's credit to to me and the service and and getting them back to to the standard that they want to be at. So that's the little victories that I'm holding on to at the moment. And then when we start to compete for real, then the three points in the weekend, it's a collective thing. The details that Gaffer puts together, the recruitment, the strength and conditioning that Clark has done, Ian's training drills, Martin Tyler's influence around the place. All of it is collective to the three points that we get on the win- uh, on the weekend or the three points that we don't get. We all fail or we all succeed together. So, yeah, that's what I'm really holding on to at the moment and, and being able to be judged upon my relationships with the players and the staff. Yeah, and uh, I've been lucky enough to have actually watched you in action when I came to training to get some photos quite close up. And, and you're, you're very, very detailed, aren't you? You had Blocky there with the bands on and he, he was having to shuffle one way yeah uh, one foot at a time and you were telling him off because his foot wasn't at exactly the right angle to i think victory i think body. the details you've got to remember that all of these guys are supreme athletes yeah. i mean they're yeah. moving so if they can't get things right in slow motion then imagine what they're going to be able to do right. when someone's up against them they've got an 85 kilogram gentleman nudging them from one direction it's a lot of forces applied within a game of football so if you can't get the details right in slow then you're not going to be able to do it right and fast and that's how players break down in my opinion so it's about really being critical with it and getting them moving exactly how I wish them to move and then it's completely on me if they break down in the future they've got to do the conditioning as directed by myself and they've got to continue that conditioning along with returning to the pitch and fingers crossed everything stays healthy well and they perform for for the club but if they don't do it properly then gaps are gaps are in the rehab and that's where we have limitations and barriers and potentially further injuries so the boys really buy into it they understand that I'm a bit of a critique but um, no I'm thoroughly enjoying it and they seem to be uh, receptive to all of my methods I'm sure they are and I hasten to add that I didn't mean it as any form of criticism I was no, highly impressed with the, the level of detail that you were applying to the drills they were doing no, I appreciate it you've got to take complete ownership so this is Gaff has given me the remit to really get the boys fit and ready and I've got to do it my way otherwise I'm going to fail doing it someone else's brilliant thanks very much for your time it's great to see you back wonderful thanks very much guys Bye.